In this video, we're going to take a look at how to add long-term memories for our AI agents. In the previous video, we talked about how to build a WhatsApp AI assistant that can take audio, images, and text. But there was a one big problem. It has no memory. Every time when a user starts a new conversation, the chatbot forgot everything from before, and that's not how a real conversation works. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to fix that. And we're going to add long-term conversational memory to our WhatsApp chatbots so that I can be able to remember the key facts across multiple chats. Now, you might be wondering why can't we just use short-term memories or something fancy like RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generations? Well, here's the thing. Short-term memories in tools like NAN resets every session. That means that the AI agents will forget as soon as the workflow ends. Or let's say we want to make a change in the workflow, then the short-term memories will also reset as well. Now, REG, on the other hand, pulling info from documents or knowledge base, but not for tracking personalized or user-specific data like, hey, my name's Eric. And when it comes to storing this data long-term, we had a few options. Now, Airtable is great, right? It's great for a simple visual database, but it has API limitations and it's also less scalable for growing data sets. Usually people use this product is suitable for manual data review or rather than just automated to the memory storage. Now we also have MongoDB on the other hand, where it's excellent for flexible JSON data. We choose SQL database for structure, faster for query, easy to integrate tools like NAN. So we're gonna use that instead. And by the end of this video, your AI agents will be able to remember the important details from the conversation and respond the way how you want it. Now, if you find this video helpful, please drop a like or a comment. And with that being said, let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is to go to Superbase and click on start your project. And here I'm just gonna choose sign up for a new account. And here I'm just gonna create a new organization in Superbase. Okay, so once you create your organization, it's time for us to create a project and the password for the database. So once you define those, we're just gonna go ahead and click on the create new project. So now you can see that we have our project created. Then what we can do is to go to the database and then click on create new table. So here we don't have any table, we're just gonna create one. And once we create a new table, we're just gonna give it a name. And here I'm just gonna call it conversation memory. And if you were to scroll down, you can see that we can have the option to define the columns. So to do so, basically we're just gonna add a few columns here. So first we're gonna define the message. In this case, the message here is just gonna be a text. So we're just gonna choose text. And then we're also gonna add another column here just to define the recipient. And then we also need to define the sender. So who send the message, right? So that's also gonna be a text. Now here, we're just gonna put the number, the full number for the recipient, full number for the sender, and as well as the message, right? And then we also have the created at, which is the time that when it was sent. So if everything looks good, we can just click on save. And it's going to create these five columns and a table called conversation memory. Okay, so once that's created, then what we can do is to basically integrate this onto our project. Okay, so back to the workflow, then what we can do is to add a Superbase for the tool. So in that case, we're just gonna click on tools and we're gonna search for Superbase. And once we search for Superbase, we're just gonna select Superbase tool. Now we have the operation here to add records, in this case, create operation. So first we're gonna set up the credentials and here we have to input the host and the service role secrets. So to basically get the host and the service role secrets, we just go directly to the project settings and then click on the API. And here in this case, we're just gonna click on a data API here. And then here, we're just gonna copy the URL, which is what we see here. And that's gonna be the host for our NAN. So come back here, I'm just gonna paste the host. Now in terms of the service role, we're just gonna copy the service role from the project API keys. And then we come back here and paste it for the service role secret. And then we're just gonna click on save. Connection test this successfully. Then we're just gonna close this. And then here inside of our Superbase, we have the table name. So here we can be able to select the conversation memory and then data to send, which is defined below for each column. All right, so now let's test the workflow and we're gonna see if we can be able to get a test data that we can work with. And I'm just gonna send the data here. So for example, I'm just gonna say, my name is Eric. Let's see if it triggers the workflow. So it triggers the workflow. And then here you can see the workflow has executed successfully. And if I come back, you can see that we have, hello, Eric, how can I assist you today? And now if I were to click on Superbase, so here you can see we have some data from the inputs that we can be able to save into the records. So here I'm just gonna say fields to send, which is gonna be message. And I'm just going to put the body for the text body here. Uh, that's gonna be the message we're going to record. We're also gonna add another field here. That's gonna be the sender. So who is the sender in this case? So that's gonna be the from. And then we're also gonna add another field here to also add who is the recipient. So here we also have the recipient. And then the test number here, just gonna be the recipient. All right, so now you can see that we have a tool created for a save message. And now what we can do is to give instructions for the tools agents on when to save the message. Okay, so here we're just gonna add options. And here we're just gonna add a system message. 
and I'm just going to expand this and here we can be able to change the instruction and here inside of the instruction you can see that I basically specify the rule so you're an AI assistant and then the rules here is basically when a user sends a message decide if you want to save this or not into the memory and we also have if you're going to use the save memory tool to store this information do not inform the user now this can be optional if you want to inform the user that you're saving this information but simply continue the conversation as normal and then for the tools here we have stored important facts shared by the user summarize this information clearly and pass it to this tool okay that's basically the instruction now in terms of the definition for the memories these are the last store facts collected from the user including dates and time okay and most importantly we want to make sure that we only want to store facts into the account when replying and if the fact already stored in the memory, then we do not want to repeat asking the same question again, okay? Now, because in the system message, we have led the AI agents to define what's important facts to store in the memory. So in that case, in the safe message here, we have to let AI to generate the message, to let AI to summarize the message to save. So in that case, we're just gonna click on safe message. And here inside of the message here, we can actually click on the AI generate and this will basically let the AI to generate what to be saved for the message, okay? Instead of just passing what's the user sent, we can be able to let the AI to summarize it and be able to extract the most important information and save it here. So I'm just gonna click on this, define automatically by the model, and we're going to use that to save inside of our database. Okay, so let's test this out. We're gonna save this, and I'm just gonna click on test workflow. And here I'm just gonna say, my name is Tom. And let's see, it triggers the workflow and it also saves the records to the memory and sends the message. Nice to meet you, Tom. How's your day going? Okay, so now if I were to click on the save message, we can see that this is the records that we added to the superbase. We have the sender, which I blurred is out. And then we also have the recipient, which is the test number. And then we also have the message. In this case, it's basically saying that user's name is Tom, okay? And then we also have the created at, which is the date of the record insertion. And now if I were to navigate to Superbase for the conversation memory table, which here you can see the user's name is Tom. And then we also have recipient, and then we also have sender, okay? All right, so now what we can do is once we have our memory saved into our database, we can also be able to retrieve this and pass it to the AI agents to generate the response. So here we're just gonna click on a plus sign, and we're just going to search for Superbase. So here we're just going to say get many rows. And here what we do is we're just going to select a table for the conversation memory. Here we're just going to select return all records. So here we're just going to add a filter for the condition. And what we're going to do is we're going to filter by sender equals to. And here we're just going to pass the sender phone number to the field value. So once we pass it, this is going to be the value that we're going to find for all the messages that are sent by this person. Okay, so then what we can do is we can be able to click on test step and see what it generates. Okay, so here you can see we have one item being retrieved. Let's also add additional messages here. I'm just going to say I'm currently five years old. And this should be also saved to the database. And if we were to look at our table, you can see that we have another records that the current user is currently five years old. Okay, so now what we can do is we can click on the game memory here and we should be able to see two messages. All right, so now you can see I click on test step and here you can see we have two items showing. One is the user's name is Tom and the other one is user currently five years old. Awesome. So then what we can do is we can be able to pass this data onto the AI agent to be able to generate the response. But before we do so, I also want to make sure that the data that we have passed is only the messages, right? In that case, what we can do is be able to use a aggregate function that we can be able to only select the message and when the message was sent and pass those two important informations to the AI agents for each of the conversation memory messages. So in that case, for the aggregate, what we're gonna do is we're gonna choose all items data into a single list. And then in terms of the output field name, we're just gonna call it the conversation memories. And then in terms of the include, we're just gonna say specific fields. So we will only want to include these fields. And that's gonna be the message and created at. Okay, so if I were to click on test step, and you can see that this is the data that we have. So we have a conversation memories, and we have when the message was sent, and then we also have the message content. Okay, so then what we can do is back to the AI agents, we can then pass the past memories, as well as the new message from the WhatsApp trigger, to the AI agents. So in that case, we have the prompt, which is the user message. And in terms of the memories, I'm just gonna pass the memories here. So the memories is gonna be the conversation memory. So we're just gonna pass the conversation memory here. And notice here that it just returns just the object. So in that case, we need to convert the JSON objects here into a string, right, into text. So in that case, we're gonna say dot to JSON string, 
and you can see that we convert the objects into string format or text format. So we have the message date as well as the message. So once we have this, let's close this and let's try to test it out again. So I'm just gonna click on test workflow, come back here, I'm just gonna ask, what is my name? It's gonna trigger the workflow and we have a new message sent. And then you can see the workflow has executed successfully. And now if I were to come back to WhatsApp, you can see that we have a response, which is your name is Tom. So let me just turn the workflow to active. Now let's ask more questions to test this. For example, I'm just gonna say, am I allowed to drive a car? Now, because I have already mentioned in a past conversation that the age is five, right? So in that case, we should get a response from the AI that we're not allowed to drive a car because we set the age to five years old, right? Or in, the, in this case, the past conversation mentioned that the current person or the current user is five years old. So let's try to trigger this workflow and let's see what the response look like. So here you can see we got a response and it says, since you're five years old, you won't be able to drive a car yet. Typically people need to be at least 18 years old. So at least you can see that we have long-term memory stored and be able to retrieve the long-term memory from the uh, Superbase to be able to generate a response by the AI agents. All right, so then I did a bit more testing and I mentioned what food that I like and I like pizza. And then here you can see that I was able to capture this data, save it into the memory. And then I asked another question, what food do I like? then is able to retrieve the memory conversation and be able to answer this question. So you, it says, you you mentioned you like pizza and it asks another question, what type of pizza you like, right? So you can see that it's able to retrieve the data from the conversation memory and be able to answer the question that the user asked, right? And here I'm just gonna ask the same question, what is my name again? And this should be able to retrieve that information from the memory and be able to answer it. So here it says, your name is Tom. Okay, now because you can see that we have several questions, for example, what food do I like? And uh, what's my name again? And also, can I allow to drive a car? You can see that those are additional messages that we sent, but really the most important information from this conversation is my name is Tom, I'm five years old and I like pizza, right? Those are the three important information. But if we were to check the database, you can see that that's the only three information that's being captured in the conversation memory. So if I were to refresh this, and you can see that after refresh, uh, we still able to see that these are the only three data being captured from the conversation memory because we have told the AI agents to only capture the most important information into the conversation memory, okay? And that's what we have. So you can see that this workflow is very powerful. We're able to save the most important information from the conversation into the memory and we're also able to retrieve the memory along with the user prompt to ask the questions to the AI agents to respond.